Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. This is Shinaza's Life. For all of my returning subscribers and for those of you who may be a first time viewer today, I just wanna thank you for taking the time out to tune into today's video with me. So y'all, in today's video, I'm going to be going behind the scenes and walking y'all through the process of what it takes to edit my photos for Instagram. And I'll also be showing you guys what tools I use to be able to plan out my Instagram feed to make sure that everything is kind of staying the same aesthetic, same cohesiveness and all that good stuff. So if you're interested in seeing how I edit my Instagram photos and also how I plan out my Instagram feed, definitely make sure to stay tuned and let's go ahead and get into this video. To edit my photos, I actually use the program Lightroom, which if you're not familiar with, that is part of the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. So all of my edits to my photos are always, always, always in Lightroom. And guys, this is a subscription-based service, so I believe that I pay around $30 a month, but then I'm also getting Photoshop, I'm also getting Adobe Premiere Pro, and a bunch of other apps that are in the Creative Suite. So getting started, the first thing that I'll do is open up Lightroom. So what y'all are seeing right now is just all the photos that I'm browsing through basically all the photos that I have taken this past year that have been like YouTube related or content related. So in today's demonstration, I'll be going through the photos that were actually posted in my last video, which I basically were showing you guys how I was able to take my photos myself. So if you haven't watched that video, definitely make sure to tune into that. So guys, as y'all can see with the picture that's currently on display, this is actually how the photo looks raw, like straight out the camera. So obviously when I look at this photo, I'm like, hmm, okay, like I kind of look pale. So one thing that I always like to do is to add in some temperature, which is basically going to be giving color to the overall photo, but especially it makes such a huge impact on my skin. Now in the past, I used to use presets and I'll go ahead and show you guys that. And what presets are, it's basically already having a set filter in a sense that will automatically kind of apply to your photo. This is one that I used to use in the past. However, you know, sometimes I find that I just like to kind of edit things on my own way versus using the preset. But again, the preset can definitely be helpful just depending on what you're doing. And if you're someone who's on Lightroom, you know that usually people can sell their presets as well. So these were ones that I had downloaded from someone before. But more recently, I kind of like to go in and make the edit my own. So again, starting off with this photo, I'll be showing you guys just kind of what I'll be adjusting to kind of brighten up the picture and just kind of make it more fit to my Instagram feed. Because if you guys follow me over on Instagram, which by the way, if you don't, I am over there at Chinaza's Life. But on my page, I kind of have this theme going where there's a lot of like lightness, there's a lot of like white, there's a lot of bright colors. And this picture just straight as it is, it's just kind of looking dark, it's not looking vibrant. And in order for me to maintain that aesthetic, that's always something important to me when it comes to the edit process, thinking like, okay, like, is this going to fit into my feed? And don't worry, we're gonna go ahead and get into that portion as well. So one of the first things that I like to do, especially since this picture is looking kind of dark, is that I like to first turn up my exposure. And as you can see, it's already brightening up the picture. Now, something that I definitely know that I want to do is bring in some warmth to this photo. So I'm gonna go ahead and adjust the temperature settings now. So by dragging it to the right, you see that we're now getting that vibe that's usually akin to what's already on my Instagram. And then I just kind of play with the settings, just kind of like I'm seeing that this area of my face is really bright over here, my cheeks are really bright. So I like to bring the highlights down just a little bit to kind of make myself stand out more. If I were to put the highlights up, you kind of see that it makes my forehead brighter. But again, as you adjust different things, you should be able to kind of get it towards your liking. With the shadows, you can see that it's kind of making my hair appear kind of grayish, kind of weird color. So I like to kind of keep that down, but not too black because then you can't see my hair at all. So I think shadows right there is good. This is the white balance. I think that like this should be good. Just gonna turn my brightness up on the computer. And that's something to keep in mind as well when you are editing, if you're editing in Lightroom, especially on your computer. I personally just always like to have my brightness all the way up just so that I know what it looks like at its best in a sense, because sometimes if you're editing and your brightness is not all the way up, when you put it onto your phone or when you look at it on your phone, you're just like, wait a minute, like it looks completely different. So I definitely suggest editing your photos with your brightness turned all the way up. So now just playing with the saturation, giving myself that warmth again. 
Okay, so now color-wise, I think that this photo looks fine. Sometimes what I'll do as well is going in with this texture tool, which is basically going to smooth out my skin. As you can see, if I put it all the way to the left, it's kind of like a blurring effect, but I personally usually just keep it over on like 20 or 30. So I think that right about here is good because you know we can still see like let's say like creases right here but i'm not going in and you know i know some people will edit that stuff but i feel like i'm very simple when it comes to my edits you know like i don't want myself to look too unrealistic and i also don't want to spend that much time on the little little detail sometimes if i do have a blemish that i want to cover up um let's see if i can't really see one here but if I did have a blemish that I want to cover up, sometimes I'll go in and use the healing tool for that. And guys, this is basically what I just thought of in my head as far as what it should look like. I did have the actual one that I have exported. So let's go ahead and compare the two just to kind of see the differences between the two. So guys, this picture right here is the one that I actually ended up going with instead. As you can see, the two differences, I feel as though my face is kind of more defined right here. So you can go ahead and see the difference between the two photos. So again, it all depends on your vibe. Sometimes I'll like to edit. So I'm like, wait a minute, like let me upload both of these pictures and upload them into my app to see which one kind of fits the vibe better. But I think that in this case, I'm going to go ahead and go with the original over here. So guys, now that I have this edit, what I'll usually do is go through the rest of the pictures, especially pictures that we're taking kind of in the same stance. For example, this one has yet to be edited. So what I would do is just copy and paste those settings. And then as you can see, just copying the settings that I already had on those last few photos. Now this picture looks bomb because all I had to do was just paste that setting. Now, of course you can tweak it to your adjustments, tweak it to your likings. You can make it a little brighter, but it does help once you have that kind of general first edit so that you're able to, you know, continue making all your pictures look the same making them all look cohesive. So we have a few more right here that I'm gonna go ahead and copy these settings to as well. So just paste it, paste it again, boom. Usually something I'll do too is getting rid of all the excess photos that I'm probably not going to use. So for example, these two right here, just going ahead and getting rid of them. And as you can see, this picture was actually taken in a different background. So let's say that I tried to paste those same settings from before you see that this looks like way too bright. So this is one of those times where you're gonna want to be able to kind of tweak it to your liking. So for example, if I were to paste those settings, I'm clearly seeing that this face, like it's kind of like too orangey. So I can just bring this down, kind of seeing that the highlights can be brought down a little bit too, even the contrast, the exposure. And then now this kind of looks similar. I feel like, yeah. Even this one, I'm kind of looking pale. So I think that with this new edit that I just made, I'm gonna go ahead and copy this. And then boom, you see how the color is brought back into my life. And guys, sometimes I can have upwards of like 300 or 400 photos from just one outfit, one session basically. So something that I kind of like to do as well, since there always are so many options, is kind of like go through at first and be like, okay, like this was just a tester shot or like, okay, I'm definitely not going to use this. Even if there are multiple takes of kind of a similar photo, what I will do is kind of apply the filter to all of those photos and then go through once everything kind of has the edit on it. As you guys can see, I edited some, but not all of these. I'm just getting around to it now, but I think that I am liking this. I don't know, man. Like sometimes it's hard. It's like, am I too saturated here? I really like it. Or like, does it fit better this way? I think that now I'm kind of just trying to find a happy medium when it comes to, okay, I think this would be better. Yeah. But then I like these though. I also wanted to show with you guys how I edit photos that maybe were taken outside in like an outdoorsy location. For this example, these were photos that were taken in a downtown area. And what you're seeing now is how this photo looks straight out of the camera. Again, based on my aesthetic, I'm already knowing that like, all right, it's already gotta be more brightness. So I know that. But then I'm like, okay, how can I bring the color back to me? So this is when I go back in with the temperature, kind of make it warmer. And I think that honestly, even that looks good. But then this is when we go in with the tweaks and it's kind of like, sometimes you may need to zoom in just to kind of see how the colors and how the tools that you're using and changing are kind of impacting the photo. So I think that we could definitely use some more contrast a little bit. 
the highlights can be brought down a little bit. Shadows can be brought down. Some lights can be brought down. Yeah, so guys, this is pretty similar to the other edits that I have. As you can see, this one is just kind of brighter a little bit. So let me copy this setting just to show you the difference from what I just did versus what I did in the past. And as you can see, it's kind of like I already know what colors and what vibes kind of work for me. So I feel like especially when it comes to Lightroom, it can definitely seem a little bit intimidating at first when you're just getting used to it. But I definitely encourage you to just play around with the settings, actually get to know what your style is and what vibe you're trying to go for and kind of see how you can be able to tweak it to your liking every time that you're going ahead and you know making these edits. So yeah, when it comes to portraits that are like these, let me show you again what the original is. And this is how it looks now. So let's go ahead and reset to the original. And again, now I'm already knowing that, let me just make it a little bit brighter. That's already making it look nicer, but then I'm like, all right, let me warm up the temperature. Let me move the texture down a little bit, make it a little bit darker. And as y'all can see, this is pretty similar to the other edits that I have. I actually think that I like this one right here better because something that I usually keep in mind for my Instagram photos is as you can see, is that I usually have like a white background or a light background. And sometimes just depending on where you are, or like how you edit your photos, that white can now kind of look grayish or it can look kind of yellowish. So I always just try to make sure that I'm kind of using, all right, like if I have a white background, I'm making sure that I'm actually having the background be as white as possible. And one of the ways that you're able to do that is turning the highlights up. So as you can see, that makes your background darker, but then keeps your subjects kind of um, well lit still. I think this would actually be the perfect edit. So guys, now that I've shown you how I'm able to edit my photos, I wanted to show you what apps that I use to be able to plan out my Instagram feed. So guys, when it comes to the planning of my feed, I actually use this app called Preview, which I'll go ahead and show you guys right now. Basically on the Preview app, I'm able to kind of go through what is already on my Instagram and they actually show you your Instagram feed as is. And as y'all can see to the bottom right of each photo that already has been posted to Instagram, they kind of have that little icon over there just letting you know what's already on your feed. One thing I did notice about this app though, however, is that let's say if you post a reel to your Instagram feed, the reel doesn't show up in the actual app as far as planning. So sometimes I do have to go between my Instagram and between my actual page just because I do have a couple of reels up on there. Just be able to be sure that what I'm about to post is going to look good next to and around the other things. So the great thing about this app is that you're able to, let's say I want to move things around you're able to kind of drag and drop, mix things around, be able to import as many photos as you want. That's one thing that I love about this app because there are some apps out there that basically give you a limit as to what you can upload. And for me, as someone who plans out their content weeks in advance, it's just super helpful to be able to not have a limit on how many photos that I can upload at once to this platform. The great part about this as well is that obviously it is not going onto your Instagram feed directly. I feel like that's what I was doing in the past, like doing like a quick little post and delete to make sure it would look good. But with this planning app, you're essentially able to look into the future and kind of be able to plan out your feed. So as you guys can see, there's also some things that may be like repeat photos or some things that look like they're from my cell phone. And that's because they usually are. I also use this app to kind of tell myself, like even though this picture of my new chair is here, which by the way, I posted over on my Instagram story, the unboxing of this chair. So again, make sure to stay tuned to my IG for exclusives. But anyways, basically I'm saying that, let's say that this chair is here. It's because I know I'm telling myself like, okay, like, yes, this is a phone picture, but make sure to take a picture of it with your camera. So it's just nice to be able to even put in regular photos in there just to kind of remind yourself like, all right, this is what we're shooting up next. This is what you should look out for. This is what we may or may not do. Even something like this, having one of these old photos here of basically, uh, what's it called? My message board. I'm able to tell myself, all right, it's time to update the message board. And when you do make sure to post it. So that is why I have some things that even this video right here, kind of the same thing, just being able to remember like, Hey, like, this isn't actually going to be posted on your feed, but this is what you need to shoot up next. So when it comes to posting kind of back to backs, I tend to kind of like, let's say I would rather put the chair here 
and then you know face here so then that way it's like a diagonal kind of in a sense and again you're able to remix things able to see what works well what colors would be good together and i really just love the ease of this app something great about this app as well i actually haven't used this feature yet myself but there is a way to be able to schedule your posts and over to the right we have a place where you're able to either upload your photos or your videos and also a carousel which is great because i know for myself an experience with using some other apps they didn't allow you to do a carousel so for me it was just kind of confusing sometimes if i was trying to plan out in advance but i couldn't put more than one photo in one post it just kind of became frustrating so that was why i was super happy to be able to find the preview app so i wanted to show you guys what my instagram is looking like right now as y'all can see i have this nice light theme going on and i'm really just beginning to kind of have more of a structure to my page which I'm super, super happy about. Also guys, something that I didn't mention when it comes to the actual planning of my photos as well, is what goes into it beforehand. I think that it's important to be like, all right, like knowing what colors that you usually wear, or again, knowing uh, what poses that you've already used in the past. Just knowing that, you know, you don't want to have your pictures all look exactly the same, but you want them to be able to look similar so that you're able to kind of have that distinct aesthetic. I feel like this all depends on, again, what your goals are. I know for certain people, like let's say like fashion bloggers, sometimes in every single post they have on a different outfit. But I know for me, first of all, I don't have that many clothes, but you know, if anyone's trying to send me some clothes, definitely let me know what's up. I'd be proud to wear your clothes. For me, I like to spread out my same outfit over a couple of posts so that I'm not all posting this one outfit and then never seeing the outfit again. And that's especially helped my feed build into what it is today. Even when it comes to photos of my room, that's something that I do as well. Making sure that I'm getting different angles or again, just taking photos of whatever the updates to my room may be. And even when it comes to posting, some days I'll have a post ready, but I won't have my caption ready. And that's one thing that I feel like is important to note too. It's like, yeah, like consistency is important, especially when it comes to growing on Instagram. But you also want to make sure that you're not just posting anything, you know, especially if you're trying to stick to a theme. If you're going to post whatever and risk messing up your theme just for the sake of posting, I feel like that's when you need to kind of take a step back and reevaluate why you're even doing this or why you're trying to grow. Because honestly, like it's better to not post until your posts are actually ready to fit into your aesthetic versus just posting just to be like, all right, I posted five times a week. It's like you posted five times a week, but now your feed looks all completely jumbled up because you just didn't have those photos ready or you didn't have those colors ready. And y'all seriously using the preview app just helps me so much in being like, all right, like this looks good together. This doesn't look good together. Let me continue to switch it around versus just kind of uploading to Instagram and hoping for the best. It's just super helpful to be able to have these tools within your reach. And if I didn't mention it before, the preview app is free. So definitely make sure to check that out on the app store. And that's all that I have for y'all today. Thank you so much for staying tuned. And I hope that this video was able to help you if you guys have questions about any of the things that we discussed today definitely let me know down in the comment section below or you can send me a dm over on instagram at chinaza's life and speaking of instagram if you're not following me over on instagram definitely make sure to do so you can find me over there at chinaza's life i'm also on twitter at chinaza's lens as well as on tiktok at chinaza's life if you are not yet subscribed to my channel definitely make sure to pause this video go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if y'all don't have your post notifications on, definitely make sure to do so by tapping the bell icon, 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 icon. Definitely make sure to do so by tapping the bell icon so that you can be notified when I am posting a new video or a new poll or, you know, just anything that I'm posting over on YouTube. So that brings me to the end of the video, guys. I hope that you all stay blessed and stay warm and I will see you back for my next one.